welcome to The Natural View. I'm Maggie Jacqua. I'm the content director of Whole Foods Magazine. And my co-host today is Heather Weiner. She's the VP of Media and the publisher of Whole Foods. Hi, Heather. Hi, Maggie. Glad to be here. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, we have a great guest today. We have Julia Craven. She's the VP of Education and Innovation at Enzymedica. And we're going to discuss uh, an ingredient that's really trending right now. We're going to talk about berberine. And um, so welcome, Julia. We're glad to have you on here to kind of cover this hot topic. I know a lot of people want to learn more about this. Very, very excited to be here and especially talking about what we're going to talk about. All right. So this, this was in the spotlight in our June issue that just came out. We had a whole big feature on botanicals and we asked experts to tell us like, what are the top trending? And we told each person you could pick three of the top trending. And um, berberine was mentioned by a few people. So it's in there in the top trenders. And I understand it's also a top seller for Enzymedica. So for viewers who aren't familiar, can you just give us an overview of what it is? Absolutely. Um, berberine is actually, usually it's the root or the bark, generally from the barberry plant, but the alkaloid from berberine can be gathered from other plants, such as golden seal, um, and some other plants, but typically also because it's more sustainable, barberry is used. So it's really the alkaloid in the plant that's doing the work. And it's been shown time and time again in clinical studies to help with blood sugar regulation, to help with healthy blood sugar regulation. And that is what many of the studies are on. It's also been shown to help with what we call the metabolic master switch, AMPK, for metabolic health. And so berberine as a remedy, it's been around for quite a long time. Actually, original texts on berberine are thousands of years old, and they um, talk about berberine as a digestive remedy as well. So it's not a new remedy at all, but it is getting a new spotlight for sure. Sounds awesome so far. Um, yeah. So what about, um, some people are talking about the weight management side of it. Mm-hmm. That has to do with that metabolic master switch called AMPK. And that's actually one of our body's own endogenous enzymes, AMPK. And maybe people are familiar with intermittent fasting or cold plunges or getting really, really hot in exercise and then going and doing a cold plunge. These are all ways to activate that AMPK, that metabolic master switch. It's something called hormesis, which is an intentional short-term healthy stressor on the body to switch on that metabolic process. So interestingly, berberine does that as well, but it has a really unique secondary activity and it is good for the microbiome. Berberine enhances a keystone native bacteria in the microbiome called Acromantia mucinophila. Now this bacteria has been studied and well known to have a correlation with lower body fat percentage. So it has a reshaping ability to it. I don't wanna talk about it too much with regard to this weight loss because we all know that's a, that's a whole program, right? But we've seen for years that berberine can be very, very supportive for healthy weight management. It does this in another way as well in that it, in that, it helps with sugar cravings. So we have one in three adults in the US who are overweight, and we have one in three adults in the US who have blood sugar dysregulation. And berberine can really, really help with getting to a point where you don't crave the sugar as much. That's always kind of the problem, right? You may wanna quit the sugar, you may wanna kick the habit, but it's really hard to do, it's quite addictive. And berberine can be very supportive in that. So through these three ways, AMPK activation, um, acromantia mucinophila in the microbiome, so helping the microbiome, and then helping with blood sugar cravings, that does add up to an item that's going to help with healthy weight management. That's excellent, and I'd, I'd much rather do that than jump in a icy tub, so. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I, I have not mastered the cold showers yet, but I do take my berberine every day. <laughs> Great. So can you tell us a little bit about where the science stands and, you know, in terms of who should be taking this or any safety guidelines, where are we at with all of that? So as far as safety guidelines go, again, this has been a highly, highly studied plant. However, if somebody is already taking a medication for blood sugar regulation, 
um, metformin being a very, very popular one, you would not want to take that in combination with berberine. In fact, just as a precautionary note, we always say if you're on any medications, check with your pharmacist. Often your pharmacist is very, very knowledgeable about medication interactions, but for certain, anything um, that is uh, a medication for blood sugar regulation, you would not want to combine with berberine. So who should be taking it? Um, well, I started taking it because I was a rabid sugar craver and I always have been, and I've used other things over the years. I've used chromium picolinate. I've learned to have a higher protein diet and that would help me. But when I started taking berberine, I will tell you, you just, I didn't even think about sugar anymore. So yeah. that's how I started taking it a few years ago because it just makes it so that I do not crave sugar whatsoever. So for somebody who's in the situation that I was in for sure, um, anybody who is interested in their metabolic health, anybody who is doing intermittent fasting to try to stimulate AMPK for autophagy, that is all very important. And berberine can support that as well. So, um, I mean, really, berberine is one of those things that nearly everyone could take and there's going to be benefit from it. It's been shown to help with cardiovascular health, support the circulatory system. It's a great... Um, it's great for the microbiome, not only because of the acromancia, but it is often used in treatment of bacterial overgrowth in the gut. It's used in that way. And again, it's because it's helping the microbiome to function better. So I can't really think of many people who wouldn't want to take berberine, honestly. Well, you were kind enough to share a bottle with me at um, Expo West. So I've been taking it as well. And I do have to agree. Um, my sugar, I do like sugar as well. Um, <laughs> That has been so. Um, thank you there, and I have I am a fan. Mm -hmm. Um, but also, so we did. We talked a lot about the microbiome, which of course fits into the whole Enzyme Medica plan. And you know, you are very much a microbiome company, so mm -hmm. it seems like a natural progression to have this product as well. But um, also, um, besides the microbiome, another thing, and you did just hit upon it a little bit. But what about um, immune and joint? Any other benefits as well? Well, I mean, anytime you're supporting the microbiome you're gonna be supporting um, especially immune function. Um, as another thing that berberine is um, really excels at, have you heard of biofilms in the gut, what those are? Mm -hmm. So biofilms, yeah. those collections of bad bacteria, they get this plaque-like layer over the top of them and they're pretty hard to get rid of. Mm -hmm. Now I bring this up in response to the immune question because we all know that when we take a positive bacteria, a good probiotic, we wanna give it the best opportunity to survive, right? Well, when we have biofilms, that becomes very difficult. And one of the parts of treatment for biofilms is using berberine to help to cleave them and help to remove them. So they are, it is going to support the immune system via the microbiome. Now there are lots and lots of, there's actually a study that I refer to often that's a meta study. It's a combination of 2000 studies on berberine. So there are you know, many studies on immune health, cardiovascular health, joint health that has some of the same constituents as curcumin does as well. They're both these bright yellow plants. But we really, really focus on the blood sugar regulation and the microbiome, as well as that metabolic master switch, AMPK activation. That, that's such a multitasker. And I mean, you, you, you mentioned it helps so many people, but really a lot of these, like as women, we're three women here, um, all of, around the same age. And these are all benefits <laughs> that I really, you know, want everything that you just said. So um, great product. And I know you have, Heather mentioned that she's tried one and you have two products. Can you talk about yes. some of the differences? Can you talk about the, the added benefit of the phytosome? What is sure. phytosome and how does it help people get the benefits? Sure. Well, first of all, I want to talk about, we've talked about how berberine is great, all the wonderful things about berberine, but there, there is a drawback. And that drawback is, is that it has very low bioavailability. So when you're taking a berberine, a regular berberine HCL, many of them are about 500 milligrams, you're only getting about 5% of that into plasma. So it has really, really low bioavailability. And this is why you have to take high amounts, okay? Because you need high amounts in order to be able to get any active into your bloodstream. And that's not, you know, that hasn't been a, a huge issue, but when you have high amounts and someone who has a sensitive digestive system, now it may be irritating. 
And also when you're taking high amounts for a very, very long period of time, because it is kind of a stringent alkaloid, it may not be the best thing to take for a long period of time. You might want to pulse with it. I always recommend people take a little bit of time off with berberine, just because you can have some digestive distress if you're in that 1500, 2000 milligram a day zone for a very, very long period of time. So that's the drawback with berberine is it's not very high bioavailability and then you have to take higher amounts. So what the phytosome does is it solves that problem. So the phytosome is a delivery system that includes a fat with the berberine. And then it also has grape seed extract and pea protein, which helps to deliver it into the cell. And we were the first to launch this berberine phytosome and it's been shown in the studies that it has 9.6 times better bioavailability than regular berberine on its own. So we've solved the bioavailability issue, meaning you need to take quite a lot less. You're taking much, much less berberine, but getting a much higher level of absorption. And that's the benefit of the phytosome. So you don't have to take the two, three times a day. You can take one or two twice a day and be done and be getting a better result with the phytosome. Sounds good. Um, yes, yes. Um, so then also, I know you also have a time release formula. So is, I'm assuming that's why you also decided to go with the time release with what you just said or? The, well, so we have we have berberine HCL, which is um, more, more of what you would typically find on the market. We do make sure that ours is only sustained, is sustainable and only from Barberry because there is some issue with people using golden seal uh, to get their berberine HCL. And we wanna always make sure that we're sustainable. Golden seal isn't as sustainable. Um, and so that is the one that uh, we launched a few years ago and is a, has actually been a top seller in our line and very, very well-loved product. Um, the phytosome, we found this technology and said, we absolutely have to launch this. And so that's why we have the two products. Many people are, are, the phytosome is going to be new to them. They have been taking berberine for a while, but they might enjoy taking the phytosome because they're taking a lot less pills and they're getting a great result. Yeah, that's always me. And it, the pills are smaller too? They? They're a little bit smaller, yep. And the clinical studies on it are, are absolutely incredible. The clinical studies on the berberine phytosome, um, the most compelling one is over a 60 day course, taking two in the morning and two in the evening, a 22% reduction in visceral adipose tissue. 22% reduction. Now that's, that's not, there is a reduction in overall BMI, but I'm really, really interested in that visceral adipose tissue because that's, that's that fat that we are concerned about, that hormonal fat. And so that is a really, really compelling number for just taking two capsules twice a day. Absolutely. Um, can you just, since you, you touched on it just briefly, but can you talk a little bit more about why getting rid of that visceral fat is so important? So it's actually um, not even being thought of as a fat on its own anymore because it's so involved with hormonal signaling. It's actually being thought of more of as its own organ system because it is what we call the hormonal fat. And so when we, we want to, you know, have as little of that around our major arteries and our tissue as possible. So I know that's been, that's been a big concern for menopausal or perimenopausal Absolutely. women. Anytime that there's hormonal, um, hormonal dysregulation, we want to try and be addressing that VAT. All right, let's talk sustainability. You touched on it. Um, what, just if you can go into a little bit more about what the sustainability issues are with the botanical and how Enzymedica is taking steps to you know, do the right thing. Absolutely, well, I mentioned that berberine can be sourced from several different sources. And one of them is the golden seal root, um, another bright yellow, very, very medicinal plant. But in certain states in the US, golden seal is considered endangered. Um, so, I had a few customers actually reach out to me and they said, oh my gosh, berberine is endangered. And so I went on, on search for it to try and figure out what, what was being said, because we're only using the barberry and that's, you know, so we've always been 
um, using the most sustainable. And now more and more, I'm very happy to see that customers are actually putting in parentheses that they're getting the berberine from Barberry. A few years ago, not everybody was doing it. So I'm really happy to see that there's been a shift there. So I went searching because I found like one article from 2008 about berberine not being sustainable. And it's not on actually on any watch lists any in, in the world. It's not on the CITES list. It's not on the red list. It is actually grows prolifically in India. Um, so we are, you know, using um, high quality sources and I'm not really worried about the sustainability of berberine itself. It was more that people were not actually using barberry <laughs> <laughs> and that was a sustainability issue. Interesting. Okay. Yes. Well, berberine sounds amazing. And um, so glad that you shared and educated us some more on it. Um, it makes me feel better taking it. Yes. So thank you so much for sharing. Is there any other takeaways you'd like to share with us on it? You know, berberine is really hot on social media right now. If you turn on TikTok, you're going to see something about berberine. There's a lot of berberine information. It's even on the news. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to come on and talk about it, because they're, they're talking about it as a replacement for some pharmaceutical medications. Mm -hmm. And that's not at all what we are looking to promote in any way. Um, and I have even seen people taking their medications with berberine. They work somewhat differently. You know, sometimes a medication will work in a similar way as plant does, or actually the medication was modeled after the way a plant works, but they're very, very different. And I just want to encourage people to really work with their qualified healthcare practitioner. If you are thinking about making a choice to switch and your qualified healthcare practitioner doesn't have to be, you know, your, your typical Western MD, maybe it's your naturopathic physician. So whatever is qualified for you and you feel comfortable working with. I just want to encourage people to really make um, a good choice in that way because sometimes these trends go just yeah. go crazy and all of a sudden you're like what did yeah. you just do and what are people doing like this herb has been around safely for thousands of years and now we have issues and it's because yeah. people are kind of taking taking decisions that they need help with into their own hands so I so appreciate that you just said that it's so true. And obviously, you know, I mean, I know Enzymetic is so ethical about what, you know, obviously we're very ethical about what we, what we do. And, um, and yeah, I have um, seen that social media that you have been discussing. And um, yeah, I mean, it does something that raises a lot of flags for us. So I totally appreciate you sharing that and telling people what to do responsibly. So thank you for that. Yeah, there is so much excellent information about berberine because it's been so highly studied that it's really easy for people to find the good information. You can also always visit our website. Um, I'm really involved in all the blogs and we have lots of blogs um, to access as well. So, you know, it doesn't have to, our news doesn't have to come from social media. <laughs> this is one instance where it is really easy to find information about this plant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Excellent. Well, thank you for getting us up to date. And as you said, everybody can head over to enzymedica.com for more information on this and other remedies. And uh, so Julia, thank you so much. Thank you, it was yeah. really fun guys.